to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Green? Uh, Green Sammy, this is a... Ha-ha, Mazda. That clicking is hard for me, bro. Ha-ha, Mazda. Ha, three, three, four, four. Ha, ha, Mazda. Green Sammy, this is my Zulu brother here. And it's my good brother, uh, uh, okay. brother Sarah, that's doing it. And what we were talking about a little while ago, we are talking about the business of tourism. Yes. And I, mess, I was telling my brother, can you, can you repeat your name and introduce yourself to our people? Ha, ha, Mazda. And you are a Zulu man. Zulu. Or you call me Mtandeni. Mtandeni. Yeah. But my clan name is Hakamazwe. Okay. Nice sure, brother, so you got to tell us what kind of tours you do. Uh, I do uh, cultural tours. I do safari tours. Uh, educational tours. Photography tours. Honeymoon tours. Everything you might think about. Yeah, at home in South Africa, number one. Uh, absolutely. And brother Sarah, uh, man, I'm impressed by a black man yeah. doing some safaris and things like that, man. Yes. That's perfect, man, because we got we to gotta take some of this industry, man. Yes. 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 What you're saying is not a lot of black people that do tour, tourism and safaris. Yes. Black companies. Safari. Yes. Safari, that business is dominated by whites. Yes. So We are so blessed with the animals here, you know, in South Africa. So uh, you must tell our brothers in the U.S. all over, we are waiting for them here at home. There is no place like South Africa. There you go. I'm going. Absolutely, but appreciate the energy. Okay. Thank you very much. Please keep in touch. No okay. Right. okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, we will, brother. Okay. Enjoy. Those are not your people, are they? Oh, no, they're not. Um, but um, how are we looking at? It's time to go? Yeah, I'm yeah, going to head over to uh, Constitution Hill. But with tourism, tourism has now overtaken the mining industry wow. in South Africa. And when it comes to uh, safari, particularly crew, there's not very many black-owned companies. Uh, so what is the like encouragement to, to encourage more of us to get into that business, especially uh, native people or local people? Uh, like I say, it's have overtaken the mining industry. Mm -hmm. That's huge. So there's a lot of business out there. And if we don't start taking it back little by little and start networking with each other, uh, we're going to be left behind. And these animals, when you go up in Kruger and the safaris, these are indigenous animals to Africa, you know, where there was indigenous tribe that used to roam these lands and live in harmonies with these animals. So it's, it's all right. We, we have a right to these. It's, it's all land. We have a right to these. We should be taking our people in there. It's not just about animals when it comes down to safaris, but it's about just uh, that part of uh, African culture that was taken. You know, and being one on one with nature and observing the animal kingdom. So it's a part that was taken that we got to take back little by little. So I'm doing my part. Uh, I only uh, hire Africans whether they're South African, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique, wherever. If you're out there and you speak Portuguese from Mozambique, look me up. We're looking for Portuguese speakers, uh, Spanish speakers. So that's that's what it's about, just trying to take it back little by little. Excellent. That's a good way to expand, brother. Um, absolutely. Uh, going into the different southern, like Southern Africa is a great region itself. Um, you know, to move over to different countries, and that, and the same thing with myself in uh, the world of tourism. I started explaining to people that, you know, we have all these countries that people do that that, that, that tourism is booming at. You know, you talk about Jamaica, you talk about uh, Senegal, the Gambia, Ghana. You talk about South Africa, all black countries. Yeah. And you know, so we should take a, you know, strong energy in this get into business but sometimes we don't know business like that and that's why I'm always trying to encourage my brothers and sisters to reach out and for me to even talk with them and share my knowledge and skills in the business and help people get involved in the business uh, but I see in the next five years or so if we keep on rolling like how you and I are rolling brother we'll make a, a world of a difference so, are, so I appreciate you taking the lead on it oh you're welcome we also taking white dollars in America having them bring it to Africa that's, that's a good idea right there. Giving it to white companies who are employing Africans. So we're flipping the whole thing around, you know, little by little.
Exactly. Exactly. And I tell people we gotta, you know, we we have to get in you know, a the revolution has to be more about economics. We have to be more about organizing and putting our money together to make things happen and create economic opportunities for each other. Because at the end of the day, you can talk all the black power, the revolution, throw fists up, do a bunch of things. If you're not looking to connect us and you know, create opportunities, you know, you're gonna start losing people. Exactly. Yeah, so I tell my brothers, get in the business and push the movement using business. Yeah, like you're a quiet guy, and you know you're making, you're doing a lot based on your, that's your movements of business. Right, right. <laughs> you know, without having to scream or yell or, or throw up a fist or say anything. Right. No, it doesn't take hard. The revolution is followed in many different ways. Yeah. Many different ways. So I do it the way that I do it. There's other brothers out there like yourself, who's been doing it for a very long time, and and and, and bringing. Uh, uh, people from diaspora to Africa and exposing them uh, to a lot of things that they don't know. We've been so miseducated, miseducated on Africa to a lot of us, we don't have clue. People come here and they're surprised to see how uh, developed South Africa is. I get all types of questions, you know. I don't, I don't laugh at anybody that asks questions. No silly questions. If you don't know, you don't know. I mean, that's an interesting question. That's a question I ask myself all you know. the time when I come here. Like, wow, this is incredible infrastructure. Why can't we do this in Ghana? My, you know, my favorite country. Right. So, you know, come. You gotta come. You gotta come here and see for yourself, brother. Peace, and let's do it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, brother, absolutely. Uh, I just want to give people your website and just any basic information. Uh, I'm from Balanta Imagine. That's B A L A N T A. Balanta Imagine, like Imagine is. And Balanta is the tribe that my family is from in Guinea Bissau. They were the Balanta. Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. Um, the Atlanta people is, is what I decided to name my business after. Uh, my wife and I started this some time ago. And we always work in the power of the ancestors. The ancestors play a huge role in what we do. So we all, so every time someone called the company by name, Balanta, they're lifting up my ancestors. That's it. That's, there you go, man. That's it. Black empowerment right there. there Black go. nation building. Let's go, people. Let's get here. It's time to stop talking, to sitting on the couch, get up, and let's, and let's do something. Let's move Africa forward and don't fall into this notion that Africans on the continent don't like Africans from America and from Jamaica and from the diaspora. There's nothing can be further from the truth. That's a lie. Exactly. Just like there's a, a, a little madness between uh, Nigerians and South Africans. And I've been here and I've been talking to people. It's not, no one has brought it up. No one brings it. And, and even when I talk to you, like, so I realize even more and more that it's being boosted up by the media because I literally turn, turn on stations and you just, the same recycle information, but I, you know, when I come out here, I see Nigerians and everybody, and, and Nigerians and, and other story. They will dig up old video footages, uh, something that happened 20 years ago, and they pretend like it just happened last week. <laughs> That's funny, man. Try to tell them, don't come here, but they here everywhere. I mean, the reality is, we pull up in this cultural village, and I, I did not see another black group. I've seen one or two black individuals, but 95 percent of the people that were here. Or all white, right. white when folks. You take that Delta flight. It's, it's, it's them. Oh man, I was on the Delta flight. I was like, this is where all the tickets went when I was trying to get more tickets. <laughs> like the students, old folks. This, the plane was like 95 pack of 95 percent pack of white folks. And then you. we had a KLM flight that was almost, with the exception of a few, few of our folks, almost 100 percent pack. And they're telling you not to come here. So you figure that out. There's a reason why. But South African need blacks, Africans throughout the diaspora to help them move forward. There's issues here just like any other country. They only just over 20 something years of democracy where they're starting to move forward now. Yeah, there's a lot of work to, to do here. Yeah, there's uh, township. Yeah, there's shanty town and shacks. Yeah, it's here. But by the same token, you also have blacks that are doing very well here. Very well. And I'm not just talking about material things, but getting a higher education, doctors, lawyers, and scientists. So come. If you got skills, 
don't discount South Africa to come. It's part of the continent as well. Yes, absolute family, and it's an incredible opportunity. My brother lives here, and um, you know, I know, and it's it, it does take one or two of us to move here and, and, and make a difference. But uh, you know, you're doing your thing here. It's not like you're like, man, how am I gonna make it tomorrow? <laughs> you're doing your thing here, and and I've known you for a long time, almost for 20 years. You're a person that plans stuff out. Like I remember you telling me about this, and you planned it out. Right, right. Yeah, I've been planning for a very long time. So Don't family, let anybody think you that. Let anybody make you think that you need a job in America in order to make it. I didn't know. You don't. Absolutely, family. You don't. I came here with a plan. I came here with a way to sustain myself, but I didn't have the business idea of what I'm doing now until I got here. My wife has always been had that entrepreneurial spirit. She's always she runs a human resource company. Uh, there's other things that she do. She's always had to fall away of thinking, uh, working for herself. And um, so when me and her met, it was just a perfect. Perfect match because I'm the same way. And now we got to go. Appreciate it, brother. So, family, the journey continues. Appreciate you, brother. All right, peace. Get everybody organized. Peace.